Hey everybody, Eagle Run 2-3 here. Welcome to the big video about 8.6 Blackout. We're gonna go through this as quickly as possible, but this was spurred on because Fort Scott Munitions sent in a couple boxes of their Tumble on Impact in 8.6 Blackout. So here's what that looks like. Uh, you probably already saw that in another video. Verog Brass, we're gonna talk about that. But let's kind of start from the beginning and go full encompass of everything I know about 8.6 Blackout ammo. We're going to start out at the very beginning with Gorilla. I remember when I got my fax and barrel in, there was a little card with a code on it. And that was how you guaranteed yourself some ammo from Gorilla. Uh, Faxon and Gorilla worked together to make sure that the people who bought barrels were able to get a couple boxes of ammo. I think you were maxed out at like 100 rounds. I was able to get that code on my original barrel, and this was way back in 2022. This was at the end of May, early June is when that came out. And way back then, I was trying to be the very first one who built a gun that didn't have anyone send anything to them. This was before I was working with a lot of these companies and I was just a guy ordering stuff in and I needed that code to, to get my supply of ammo. So I ordered it in. This is what came in. This is the 288 grain fracturing subsonic, a really cool looking bullet. Now this is the Q head stamped brass. And this is Hornady Brass, and this is a part of that first initial million rounds of brass that Q had produced to get out to the ammo manufacturers. Gorilla got some, the Discreet Ballistics got some. Uh, I don't know who else got some, it might've just been those guys. Probably most of it went to Gorilla. And they were able to put ammo on the market, and we early, that was pretty much our only choice, unless you were hand loading. Now, I did start hand loading right away. Uh, part of this project for me was, hey, I want to fool with a Wildcat. I want to have a new hotness in the caliber. That was definitely 8.6 Blackout. Probably still is, even though we're about a year and a half later. I got this stuff in. I tested it. I had a gun that worked. Best I can tell, I was the very first guy on YouTube who had a gun that they built that didn't have any support from a factory and no one sent them anything. So let's fast forward a little bit. We got the Gorilla. We got the Discreet. There was also a company called Callaway. And I don't I do, oh, I do have Callaway. I have just about eight or 10 rounds left of Callaway that I'm hanging on to. Now, Callaway went a different direction. They went with 6.5 Creedmoor brass that they made. I, I, actually, I don't know if they made it themselves or if someone else was making it for them, but they were able to put ammo on the market with a 300 grain. And this is a Sierra Match King, I believe, and it's got the tip on it. And so this stuff, when it first came out, it still says Hornady 6.5 Cre or yeah, 6.5 Creedmoor on it. So I got in some of this stuff. We got those guys on a podcast and had a great conversation with them just about making this ammo. And for them at the time, the brass was a bit of a problem for them. Gorilla had a bit of an advantage and so did Discreet because they had some factory brass. And then as we move along a little bit further, there's a company who I don't believe is actually making ammo in Blackout anymore. Montana Blackout, it's from, oh, Firehole Arms. And this stuff I got in, and I haven't even shot any of this stuff, uh, but it is also a Hornady 6.5 Creedmoor, and they've got their own little unique bullet. What is this one? This is a 300 grain solid copper. I got a couple of boxes in, and I don't think, it looks like I haven't shot any of this. So these guys came in, but I don't think they're actually making ammo anymore. Now we fast forward, it's been about a year. This summer, I was approached by Verog Brass, and they are uh, distributed in the United States by a company called Milford Munitions. You need to know that name, Milford Munitions, because Milford is now supplying all of these companies with Verog Brass. Now, Milford sent me several hundred rounds um, I've got some of them here for us. So we're going to be reloading again. So Verog here is now making a brass case that comes out to be absolutely perfect in our case gauges and everything is fine with it. This is a big leg up for these ammo manufacturers. Fort Scott's using it. Aiken Arms is using it. Um, I believe Callaway is going to be using it. Uh, it's possible Discreet and uh, Gorilla's got a different thing we'll talk about in a second, but it's possible Discreet will also be using Verog brass. Uh, because this stuff is on the market. It is available right now to these ammo manufacturers so they can order 100,000 rounds, a million rounds, whatever they need. 
and they can get these cases and push the ammo to us as quickly and as efficiently and cheaply as possible. Here is some ammo that I made. This is Starline 6.5 Creedmoor Brass that has been uh, neck turned and I chopped it, I punched it out and I turned the neck and I resized it. And it it's a bit of a process. Uh, I have all the stuff to do it now, so it's not that big of a deal, but I was a kind of a new reloader a year ago, a year and a half ago, and we definitely had some problems. In the subsonic round, I learned a tough lesson about H110 and case capacity, uh, which we probably need to talk about that as well. Um, case capacity is an issue with these in subsonics. We're going to jump back in feet first into the subsonic reloading uh, because I now have tack stamp guns and I can do the short barrels. I have been stuck on the 16 inch, which took me in another direction onto the supersonic rounds. But here in just a minute, we're gonna look at projectiles, but I wanted to catch you up on the state of the union here with all of the ammo. Um, the stuff here from Aiken Arms, uh, this is a company that I'm working very closely with. Eagle Run 2.3 as a promo code will get you a discount. Ammo manufacturers aren't discounting stuff, especially 8.6 Blackout. This is a unique opportunity and you're only gonna know about it because you're watching this video. Eagle Run 2.3 will get you a discount. And I don't, they used to have free shipping. I, there might be, you have to buy a couple boxes to get it, but free shipping and a discount. Big shout out to Aiken Arms for hooking up my community. So far, I've had Aiken Arms out to 300 yards. It's done pretty well. We're gonna be testing the Fort Scott here pretty soon. I've done a lot of tests on Gorilla and Discreet already. I'm, these are some almost heritage status cases. So I'm, you know, the, the cases and this ammo, I'm really not planning on shooting these anytime soon. I feel like I kind of need to curate those a little bit and kind of save them so I can continue to tell these stories of the 8.6 blackout for generations to come. So for the very first time here, we're gonna take this uh, Tumble On Impact. Now this is a technology that's been around for a while that they are big fans of at Fort Scott and big shout out to them for, for taking a risk and producing 8.6 Blackout for us. We, we've gotta support these boutique ammo manufacturers. They're out there taking risks uh, that the big guys aren't taking because we're pre-Sammy right now. So for the very first time on camera, the Sheridan Case Gauge and the Fort Scott Munition Tumble on Impact. This is a hold your breath moment. Okay, great. All right, it works. So a lot of that comes down to the fact that we've got good quality Varog brass and it is, uh, this stuff can be reloaded. Uh, I'm gonna test it, but 15, 20, 25 times. It is better than using 6.5 Creedmoor brass because the thicknesses of the walls are all correct. When we make our own ammo, we're turning a case wall into a neck and it just creates problems. You're gonna have neck tension issues. Uh, you gotta turn that neck down so that the bullet fits in there properly. And you guys have seen all my case gauge videos um, on that with our own stuff that we've made. Uh, but anyway, this is really helpful because that Varog brass is already good to go. And so as long as you're putting a, a good bullet in there, the right depth and all that good stuff. So let's take a look at projectiles. So starting with Fort Scott, cause I got it in my hand. This is a 285 grain tumble on impact, solid copper, very pointy. And uh, this stuff is something we need to test. I don't know how accurate it is. Don't even know if it's subsonic. They don't sell a 16 and then a, a short barreled version. Everyone else so far has been putting out two versions of ammo. You'll see here on Discreet, they say this is for a 12 inch barrel. And over here on Gorilla, they say this is for a 16 inch barrel. Aitkins also says 16 inch barrel. So Fort Scott said no. So I guess it's either subsonic and everything or maybe 50-50, we'll have to see. As we got the tumble on impact there, we've got the Sierra Match King here. Uh, Gorilla has their own 288. Uh, this is the OG stuff. They've got a different weight that they're selling currently on their website which I have some of that in another box. I just don't have it out for you here. So most everybody in the 8.6 Blackout world is familiar with a company that is called Maker Bullets. So this Maker Bullet, this is a 350 grain projectile. It is actually larger than the case itself. 
an absolutely massive hollow point. It's got the slits in it. This puppy's going to open up. It's going to do an immense amount of damage. And the 350 grains is just unbelievable. So I'm going to leave this here so we can take a look at it compared to some of the other stuff. But Paul at Maker sent us some of these. And looks like we've got 50 there that we can play with. This bag is so heavy. Personally, I have my thoughts about the 350. Uh, most people are doing a 300 or a 280. Uh, we've got a 300 Match King, a 300 Solid Copper, which I'll show you I have some of those out of there, a 288, a 285 Tumble on Impact. You pretty much have to go Solid Copper because of the spin rate. The spin rate is so unbelievable that if you're using a jacketed bullet or some other bullet construction, some of the bonded stuff, these things are spinning apart in the barrel and they will shred your can. So don't mess up a $1,000 can, a $1,500 can, because you wanted to save 20 or 30 cents on a projectile. You're gonna have to get these bad boys and solid copper and pretty much that's what you're gonna have to run if you wanna be subsonic. If you wanna shotgun those out of a supersonic, have at it, but don't ruin your can over saving 20 or 50 cents on a projectile. So right here, we have a 320 grain bullet. I'll set it next to the 350. The length is about the same. You can just see there's quite a bit of difference here in the tip. Uh, this is relatively pointy, but a little bit of a flat there on the end. And these are a turned bullet that is that weighs out exactly to be like 300 and like 305 grains. These are being sold as a 300 grain but they actually come out to be 305 in this case. So you'll just have to weigh those out and adjust your loads accordingly. Now, the guy who's making these bullets for me is also the one who's making the projectiles for Aiken Arms. I've talked to him on the phone numerous times. He is a fantastic guy, and he's putting out what he thinks is going to be a really cool bullet here, and I tend to agree with him. We've got ourselves a wicked-looking open tip, hollow tip there. This is a solid copper turned bullet. And these come as a 320 grain bullet. Now, I think that the 300 to the 350, I really think that the 320 or a 325 is going to be the way to go. These actually weigh out to be 317 grains. And I think somewhere in that range is really going to be ideal for your subsonic loads. We like these long bullets because they do go into the case quite a bit. Uh, you're only putting 15 something grains of powder down there on the bottom of them. So having all that space there for those bullets to go down, you can really eat up some of that space in there. And so I think these work out to be pretty good um, at that weight. So the 300 to 320 to 350, that's my recommendation for the subsonic loads. Uh, but again, we do see a 285 and a 288 here from Gorilla. Now he also sent me some, some custom bullets, some one-off bullets to show you guys. Uh, these have all sorts of different weights and different tips on them. These are all part of his initial testing. I am incredibly thankful and grateful to be able to be testing for Aitkins and testing some of these projectiles. Uh, brass cases are brought to us from Milford Munitions. Big shout out to those guys for, for getting this in our hands so I can show it to you guys and I, we can talk about what works, what doesn't work. As this round continues to progress, I know it's been out for a year and a half, but we are still incredibly early on figuring all of this out. Um, and it, it's cost me money. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for watching because that's the only reason why I'm able to do this. And bit of a pinch me moment to be able to be testing for her. I think that's every young, every young man's dream is to be testing ammo. Okay, switching gears to supersonic. One of the things about the 8.6 Blackout that hasn't been really established or uncovered is how fantastic this round is as a supersonic round. It is devastating at the one and three twist. You've got great range. You have an unbelievable amount of energy on target and it really could replace a lot of guns for people, uh, but it's underappreciated and undervalued currently as a supersonic round. The hotness for sure is the fact that you're pumping a 350 grain subsonic. Of, of course, that is the cool party trick um, with the one in, with the twist rate and the suppression and the quietness of a giant bullet. Unbelievably cool. But the supersonic capabilities of this have not been appreciated in my opinion. 
From my tests, we have a supersonic bullet that I found to be really accurate in my hand loads. We're talking about under MOA at 100 yards. This is a sub MOA caliber supersonic. We have a, a good quality bullet, Barnes TSX. I don't trust the TTSX, the tipped ones. I don't trust those. I'm willing to be proven wrong down the road, but these are so hard to find. I only have about 20 of them left. I've been through a couple of boxes of these and they're just really hard to find. 210 grains TSX, it is the Boat Tail Hollow Point and that is this one right here. We have a hollow point and a bit of a boat tail there on the end. 210 grains. This is uh this is a great round for for supersonic hunting. We also have these 205 grain, they're very similar. 205 grain from Hammer Bullets. Hammer is a, another custom projectile manufacturer. You'll probably see some of these companies, you know, in some of the other finished ammunition, or if you're reloading it, check out the 205 Hammers. I found these to be incredibly accurate, sub MOA as well out of this. Now, as far as the accuracy is concerned, this is not a precision round from factory loads in subsonic completely serviceable hunting accuracy supersonic uh even subsonic you can you can be in an inch group um super subsonic okay and our friend who's making these bullets for akins also sent me a 210 grain these actually weigh out to be uh 209 and they're quite a bit bigger well maybe they're not so here's how they stack up with the hammer the barns and then our custom bullet right here that will be available from Aiken Arms. And I don't know if they're gonna be selling these in bulk like for us reloaders, but he did send me 50 pieces and it has a very flat tip on the end there. And it looks like it's uh, a very well-made bullet. We don't have a boat tail, but solid copper, you know, lathe turned 210 grain bullet that we'll be testing here in the next couple of weeks. So as you can see, there is a lot going on here with 8.6 Blackout. Many of you are interested in this caliber and you're just gonna be purchasing ammo. Uh, if you're doing that, go ahead and save your brass. Someone will want this. This is still very valuable. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're at an ammo manufacturer, pick up some Verog brass from Milford. If you're a reloader, go to Milford Munitions. Um, I might have a promo code for you on those uh, to get yourself some brass cases. I think they're gonna be selling them in 50s and 100s and we can get these retail as reloaders. The quality here of this stuff is really high. I'm expecting lots of reloads and for this to, to serve me for a very long time. Hopefully we won't have as much trouble with it as we did with our with our our own handmade ammo here. This is that was, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Big thank you to Milford and to Verog for hooking us up with some brass so I don't have to so I don't have to make that stuff anymore. If you have questions guys, holler at me. I am always available to talk 8.6 blackout. Um, if you need a connection to any of these companies, holler at me. Uh, these guys right here in front of me are all great. I, I have uh, the most amount of experience with Aitkins and Gorilla and, and Discreet. But um, I, I talked to this guy one time on the phone, and again, I don't think they're making ammo anymore. Uh, Fort Scott, I'm really new with those guys, but they're a trusted brand that's been around. Glad that they're on the market as well. Okay, that's what I got for you guys. Questions, holler at me, Eagle Run 2-3. We'll see you next time.